Well, let's bring in a guy who knows a lot about natural gas. He's been following producers for years, Martin Pelletier, Senior Portfolio Manager at Trivest Wealth at Wellington Altus Private Council. Martin, it's always great to talk to you. Happy Friday. Actually, start off with natural gas south of the border. What is that about? Um, we've got this booming export market. I know President Biden is threatening to slow it down, but why is natural gas so weak? Um, well, it's the perfect storm in regards to lack of storms. Uh, we did have a, a bit of, of cold weather come in, but that didn't last for long. Um, and so we've had two winters in a row of, of unseasonably strong, uh, warmer weather. And, uh, and at the same time, you have uh, a surge in production of natural gas, as a, it, some of it being a byproduct of drilling for shale mm -hmm. and, and oil. And so there's an excess amount of supply. And, uh, and so with the LNG, the demand from, from Europe uh, certainly has changed considerably from two years ago, again, because of, because of weather. And so um, it's really been a, um, a grouping of a whole bunch of negative uh, situ uh, catalysts that, that are setting the price down to levels that we're seeing here. Um, so, you know, if, if we do get another uh, bit of, mm -hmm. of cold weather, it's, it's good for those of us who heat our homes with natural gas. Our, I know our, our uh, segment producer, Ali Giovanni, asked you this. Do you think the market's likely to go up 10% or down 10%? And your feeling is it's more likely to go up 10% with this tech euphoria. Yeah, there's, uh, there's a lot of momentum in the market right now. Uh, I call it the narrative market. Uh, there's a huge disconnect between fundamentals and uh, what's happening uh, in, in the market here. And these things can last a lot longer than what, what people expect. And if you look at the average, I know you mentioned 20 years, uh, for those of us who can, you know, who, uh, those few of us who've been in the markets for that long, <laughs> um, there, and there isn't very many, because the average trader in the US is 38 years old, wow. so think about that. And, uh, and so the only thing they've known is tech, and tech going higher. And uh, and so yeah, there could be you know a little bit of a of a pullback here given the, the 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 great start we've had to the year, but there's probably more upside than downside in the near term, and uh, that's been very positive for young people in the U.S. as well too. I, I saw uh, a posting that uh, um, the percent of of real net worth since 2019 for growth among young people under 40 is up 80 percent. And so these young people are really benefiting from uh, this surge in, in, in tech. It's interesting, actually, Bloomberg has a story today that there are signs, fresh signs, that people are retiring in America, the so-called great retirement, and wealth because of stock portfolios going up is one of the reasons, apparently. Yeah, and and also you've got interest rates too. So, I mean, that's a net benefit to, to baby boomers who for the longest time couldn't retire and, and couldn't, you know, park their money in, in GICs or the equivalent in the U.S. Uh, because rates were so low. Mm -hmm. And so, and, and, and that in addition to, to being locked up uh, with the shutdowns and, 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 and getting older and experiencing more health issues, maybe it's all the pickleball that was played recently. <laughs> but uh, anyway, the, the point being is that um, I did see that, that, uh, that chart and it was showing that uh, two to one to two million people in excess of the average are retiring, and uh, in in last year, and so uh, you're getting a lot of people accelerating that. What about your clients? Are you are you getting people coming to me and saying, Martin, please make this work. I want to stop working. Um, no, I mean, I, I think what's really interesting is is that there's again on the positive, we've got a lot of really good things happening. You have the economy um, for the most part that's doing okay. Uh, you have inflation that's coming back down. You have interest rates that are still fairly half decent. And so, if you're retiring, um, you know now is probably not a bad time to uh, to take advantage of these sorts of things. So you have a little bit of extra confidence that uh, with your portfolio being bolst uh, bolstered by by the markets, that you're going to be okay and be able to do all the things you want to do. Now that said, try booking a room in hotel uh, hotel in Hawaii. You're going to be paying a thousand dollars a night. So there's there are areas of uh, uh, that you're not going to benefit. Yeah, I cannot believe the cost of uh, hotels. I would stay in a hostel. You know, my, my, <laughs> my daughter was in Europe staying in hostels, and I said, hey, Maeve, um, could I go over? And she said, nah, they don't want to see me staying in the hostels. In any case, the young people, they don't want to see old fellas around. Um, could we talk briefly about your highest conviction sector 
you say you're uh, sorry to say it, but it's still Canadian energy. Oh, I've been wrong for the last 12 months, and I, admittedly so. Um, and uh, you know, we we do have some exposure to to the megas. Obviously, we have to. Um, but uh, you know, it's it's the most unloved, hated sector. And uh, and the NDP want to put us in jail for it. <laughs> oh well, Charlie uh, Angus does. Yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay, go on. Sorry. Yep. Or or pay a, a million or a million and a half dollar fine. So uh, I'm I'm not keen on doing either. Um, so um, I'll I'll get in my plug before we get shut down, and I can't do that. Um, so on on energy, uh, all kidding aside, um, you saw that the Devon and Interplus, you know, rumors. Um, mm -hmm. There's there's huge value, uh, especially with the Canadian dollar. Um, you looked at, you mentioned about Canada outperforming the U.S. equity markets in the, during the commodity boom. We had a dollar at par back then. Now we're at 75 cents. And, uh, and so these oil companies are making a, a pile of money because uh, they get paid in U.S. dollars and their cost basis in Canadian dollars. And if you're an American producer, you can buy like an Interplus with U.S. assets for Canadian dollars for a, a, a discount. And so um, I think uh, we're, we're seeing some, some maybe potential for some consolidation there. And uh, it's a sector that's completely unloved right now. But um, if, uh, if oil prices stay where they're at, we don't need them to go much higher or, you know, just staying where they're at flat for the year. I mean, you got free cash flow uh, uh, among these companies at 15%. I mean, I've never seen that before. So um, that, that's why from uh, tuck it away and, and, and forget about it, treat it like a private, not look at it on a daily basis because it is volatile. Um, there's some good opportunities there.